Now I did say at the beginning of this set of videos that I will cover Mighty Morphin Power Rangers seasons 1 to 3 with a little Zeo. Basically Zordon and Alpha have survived the explosion and the command center has now become the power chamber which was always a backup in case the center was ever compromised. And boy was it ever. The Rangers new source of power is the Zeo crystal which was split into 5 pieces. With Tanya on board, the Rangers are now 6. But the Zeo Crystal can only power five people. Billy gives up his place on the Rangers, but he stays on as an advisor. So the new lineup of Rangers is Tommy as Zeo Ranger 5 Red and the leader, Cat as Zeo Ranger 1 Pink, Tanya as Zeo Ranger 2 Yellow, Rocky as Zeo Ranger 3 Blue, and Adam as Zeo Ranger 4 Green. So for the first time in four seasons, there is no one from the original Power Rangers lineup. And it's a whole new set of powers and zords, as well as a brand new villain in King Mondo and the Machine Empire. Oh, I uh, forgot to mention Rito and Goldar have been caught in the explosion and now have no memory of who they are, so they end up as servants to Bulk and Skull and become a comedy duo, the monster version of Laurel and Hardy. King Mondo and the Machine Empire, sending Lord Zed and Rita into hiding. It really did signal the end of the Mighty Morphin era, now it was all about Zeo. Zeo really kickstarted what would go on to become an annual tradition of changing up the name of the Rangers as well as its lineup and its villains. Now for me, once it was settled, the stories were more of the same formula as previous seasons of Mighty Morphin. You had your monster for the day, you had the rangers fight the minions of King Mondo who were now cogs, no more putties. You had the usual trope of the monsters growing and the rangers getting their zords and fighting the monsters and eventually overcoming them. And to be honest, I was getting a bit bored of Power Rangers at this point and was slowly beginning to tune out. However, in the episode The Power of Gold, my interest was suddenly piqued once again with the arrival of this guy. The Gold Ranger. What a cool costume. I think it is my favourite Ranger costume of all time. Now of course this wasn't the same course as the Evil Green Ranger. The Gold Ranger is a good guy, but he keeps his identity secret and he just shows up whenever the Rangers are outmatched by their villains. Now in addition to the Gold Ranger, there was also the arrival of Tommy's long lost brother David, who was Jason David Frank's real life brother Eric. His presence brought an interesting and fresh new dynamic to the show. As far as the Gold Ranger goes, there are several teases as to who it could be. Billy acted all coy when asked about it but insisted it wasn't him. There were teases that it could be David but that turned out to be false. Little side note, there were plans for David to become the Gold Ranger but his demands proved too much for the producers so those plans were scrapped as was Eric as after this episode we never saw him on screen again. The Gold Ranger actually turned out to be Trey of Triforia. Who? Yep, my thoughts exactly. It seemed like such a letdown that this unknown was the Gold Ranger. Nothing against him, it's just the way things were building, it seemed the payoff would be a big one. Turns out Trey was just a smokescreen. He's injured in battle and he splits himself into three beings, and as a result, he can't command the Gold Ranger power, so a substitute is needed. Immediately, it looks like Billy would once again become a Ranger, but that turned out to be another red herring. Due to the explosion at the beginning of the season, I'll let Billy explain here. The power of the Gold Ranger can't be infused into me. Well, I ran a biomolecular scan on myself. Do you remember when the command center blew up? I absorbed an extremely high dosage of negative proton molecules, which resist the gold power. So, he unfortunately cannot be the Gold Ranger. So, Tommy makes a suggestion. In the episode Golden Homecoming, we see his choice, but they have his face covered up with shades and a bandana on his head. The Kiaring voice sounds a little bit familiar. Now after a brief brush against the cogs and a subsequent teleport to the power chamber, and after much dilly-dallying dilly-dallying, 
Boy, it was getting very annoying at this point. Tommy reveals his choice. Jason, the original Red Ranger and leader of the Power Rangers, was back. And now I am once again invested in Power Rangers. But why does Billy look like he ain't happy to see him? I mean, they both started this whole Power Rangers thing. And why are the others all smiling like they know him? I mean, Rocky did replace him as the Red Ranger, but there was no interaction with them, especially as Austin St. John had actually left the show by the time he came on. And certainly, Kat and Tanya won't know him as it was way before their time. Story inconsistencies, people. Story inconsistencies. But in any event, it was so cool to have Jason back as the new Gold Ranger. Now he operates in the Tommy role as the 6th Ranger on the team with a cool looking suit with a shield. Seeing Jason reacquaint himself with Tommy and Billy was actually very cool to see. Watching him chill out with Rocky and Adam was also cool as well. Watching him hang out with Catherine was cool. Watching him hang out with Tanya was also cool. And I think personally him and Tanya would have made an interesting power couple, don't you think? Oh, and speaking of couples, this season, my favourite power couple, Tom and Kimberly, were no more after she dumped him via a letter. Nothing says ice cold more than getting dumped by a piece of paper. Women. Bah! But in any event, Tommy did move on and he ended up asking out Kat. She was on hand to cheer him up after the breakup with Kim. I think secretly she was jumping for joy now that she has Tommy all to herself. And in the last episode of the season we do see them walk off together hand in hand. And apparently they got married years later? There was life after Kimberly. For the time it lasted, watching all six Zero Rangers with Jason in tow and Billy as advisor, I got that great feeling again of watching Power Rangers which took me back to the first two seasons of the OG Rangers with Tommy as the Green Ranger and I was once again invested in Power Rangers. Sadly, all things must come to an end. Now first, after four seasons of Power Rangers, Billy finally leaves the Rangers for good. As a story arc was written where he became an old man, and he had to leave Earth to get help from the alien Rangers to help restore his youth. He then decides to stay on the planet Aquatar permanently with his new love interest. Now behind the scenes, unfortunately there were backstage issues with actor David Yost which forced him to leave the show and he would reveal years later on that he got bullied during his time. He wasn't even there for his final appearance so it was stock footage and a very badly dubbed voiceover which gave off vibes of Jason Zack and Trini's departures. Show business unfortunately can be very, very cruel. Also, after 17 episodes, Jason's run as the Gold Ranger came to an end. There had been a little mini arc about Jason struggling to maintain the Gold Ranger powers due to his intense workout regime. And in the last episode of the season, as good as gold, he is forced to give up the power and it is transferred back to Trey. Jason can only stand back and watch as the Rangers take care of King Mondo. It is a sad end watching him give up the power and it was kind of poetic that Tommy was on hand to tell him exactly how he feels as that was once him. Jason does walk off into the sunset however with his new girlfriend Emily by his side. Oh and the villains. Um, King Mondo after spending the first half of the season being a new menacing threat gets destroyed, is replaced by Louis Kaboom who is then also destroyed thanks to King Mondo's son Prince Gasket and his wife Archerina who takes over and is briefly in charge until King Mondo returns. Finishes out the season and ends up along with his Machine Empire family getting blown up by Lord Zed and Rita which was a comical way of ending things. Now overall this season of Power Rangers was a tale of two halves. After the cliffhanger in season 3, B it started out as very intriguing to see the direction the Rangers would go, but then it was pretty much the same formulaic stuff that we had gotten used to in the realm of Power Rangers. But in the second half, the introduction of the Gold Ranger, Tommy's brother David, Jason's return, Billy's departure after his transition from Ranger to Advisor, things got very interesting. By this point, I think there had been a bit of Power Rangers fatigue on my point, given the amount of episodes up until then. 
the show had slowly but surely begun to run its course. After Zia was done, I was pretty much checked out from Power Rangers. I did watch Turbo A Power Rangers movie and seeing Amy Joe Johnson and Austin St. John return as non-rangers and brief villains was a great thing to see. I didn't particularly care for the Turbo series, but it was a landmark in Power Rangers history as, for the first time, there was a lineup with absolutely none of the cast from Mighty Morphin to the early rounds of Turbo. It was a whole new generation of Rangers. My interest did get picked up again with the follow-up series Power Rangers in Space, a topic along with Turbo that I will look at in future episodes here on Smoke Race. A little side note, the voice of Trey is voiced by Brad Hawkins, who starred in VR Troopers as Ryan Steele, a role which was originally meant for Jason Frank when he left the second time as the Green Ranger. Brad was meant to take his place in Power Rangers as the new White Ranger, but due to Frank's overwhelming popularity, they simply swapped places. Imagine if this swap had never happened. I mean, talk about changing the course of history. Oh, and just to add to this VR Troopers Power Rangers dynamic, VR Troopers star Sarah Joy Brown, who played Caitlin on VR Troopers, also appeared in three episodes of Zeo as a potential new love interest for Tommy. Now, sadly, we've come to the part of the video that needed to be addressed. Over the years, we have lost a number of Power Rangers alum, from the voice actors to the on-screen characters. And here are just some of the more notable names. So Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, it started out as a show I absolutely hated and I had zero interest in, and I saw it as a Voltron ripoff. Over time, it was going on to become one of my favourite superhero shows ever and has created an amazing legacy that continues to this very day. 2023 will be the official 30th year of the Power Rangers, and to see it come so far has been very astounding. It will always be the OG Rangers that will be the show's true legacy, and case in point, the 2017 movie is based on the original characters, even though the direction they take is drastically different to what was in the TV show. 
And you have the Power Rangers comics from Boom Studios, which has opened up a whole new dimension to the universe of the Power Rangers. And the characters are based on the OG series. It even created a new powerful villain in the form of Lord Draken, an evil version of Tommy who killed Rita and absorbed several Rangers' powers to make himself all powerful. And all that wasn't even his biggest controversy. The biggest one being the supposed murder of Tommy the Green Ranger. There is even a take on Jason, Zack and Trini leaving, but not to go to some peace conference, but to another planet and become the Omega Rangers. Rocky, Adam and Aisha do come in and take their place. And it just opens up the possibilities of expanding the franchise even further with the OG characters. Can you imagine a Power Rangers animated show written in the vein of Justice League Unlimited or Young Justice or Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes? There have been talks of an animated show, so let's see how that works out. I mean, the influence of the original show is so reaching that it has extended into the movie and comic book worlds. And even the video games as the excellent Power Rangers Battle for the Grid is based on the storyline from the comics. Power Rangers has also inspired several generations getting involved in martial arts, and some of the most successful UFC fighters grew up watching Power Rangers. It may have started out as a US version of the Japanese show Super Sentai, but it has become so much more than that. It has changed so many lives for the better. At conventions, the actors heard stories of how fans' lives were changed simply by watching and being inspired by Power Rangers. So it has become so much more than just a TV show about superheroes. It represents strength, unity, teamwork, diversity, to name a few positives. For however long it goes on, Power Rangers has its place firmly cemented in TV history as one, if not the greatest superhero kids show ever.